Hello, I am in Christ. I have become a new man. My past is gone. My new life in Christ has begun. And the new me is being unveiled through the knowledge of my Creator. This is the new man commission with the mandate of revealing Jesus to the world, demonstrating his love to the people. Welcome. And let's begin focusing on a very simple topic and that is understanding the power and purpose of the kingdom of the air understanding the power and purpose of the kingdom of the air you will probably finally appreciate why media costs so much money and why we must get involved in it when you leave here today you will get a revelation of why Arnold Schwarzenegger can spend a hundred and twenty million dollars on a two-hour movie and make two hundred million dollars from it or you will finally understand why Madonna and Michael Jackson can command two hundred and forty to twenty fifty million dollars a year in their royalties and in their concerts and take home pay in the hundreds of millions of dollars you're going to probably understand today why the television is so dangerous and so powerful and why the radio is so effective I want you to listen with an eye and an air of revelation now I'm going to move very quickly because I want to get all of this in before we leave so please I want you to begin writing notes right away all right uh, we're going to talk about the the kingdom of the air as we deal with the kingdom series and I wanted to shift just a little bit uh, to deal with media because we're gonna get back to the kingdom characteristics uh, next week uh, or week after dr. Horner will be speaking for us next week so week after that I'll be speaking but I want you to to listen carefully to what we're going to talk about about the media now let's talk about the nature of the media and please keep my focus up there please I'd appreciate it because I'm gonna stay with the board I want you to write as fast as you can I I can't tell you how important this session is for your children for your grandchildren and for you first of all there's some principles I want you to write down first the first one is that there's nothing on earth as powerful as the human will nothing more powerful than that matter of fact the human will is so powerful that God himself does not control it I want you to remember that there's one thing that God does not control on earth and it's the human will why because the very nature of will implies self-control God gave you the power of will number two the will controls the destiny of man your will is the agency of God's kingdom administration. When God established his kingdom on earth, he wanted it to be administrated through your will. The problem is your will is yours. The most dangerous gift God ever gave man was a will. And the most precious gift God ever gave man was a will. It's dangerous and it's precious. It's precious because God gave you the same power that he possesses, the power of a will. But it's dangerous because you also have the ability to choose against God. And that's how dangerous a will is. God intended to use the will of man to fulfill his will on earth. So God wanted you to use your will for his will. The only problem is a will gives you the power to choose even against the will of the one who gave you the will I want you to follow this thinking now number three the seat of the will is the conscious and the subconscious mind that's where the will lives it lives in the heart your heart is your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind is the seat of control for your life now you got two minds in case you don't know you got a conscious mind and a subconscious mind sub means below so you got a mind that is always conscious but then you got a mind beneath that that is not always conscious but it's deeper and more important than your conscious mind 
and your conscious mind feeds your subconscious mind information and the more your conscious mind hears something it feeds it to the subconscious mind that is why repetition is dangerous repetition constantly goes to your conscious mind but the more your conscious mind hears something it begins to deposit it or can I use the technical term it downloads it to your subconscious mind now you are safe as long as something is in your conscious mind you're still safe because you can forget what's in your conscious mind but the key is to get it to your subconscious mind once it gets there then you are in trouble why because the mind is the center of thought and it holds the key to life now when I use the word mind another statement to write down as a man think it so is he we all know that but please quote it properly as a man think it well in his heart there are two thinkings there's a think and there's a heart think now the word heart here is a Hebrew word referring to the subconscious mind that's the one below Solomon says you are whatever is in your subconscious mind your subconscious mind is your heart your subconscious mind is your heart your subconscious mind is your heart whoever controls your heart controls your life whoever can get enough information into your subconscious mind will control you because as a man think it in his heart that's the man so if you want to control the man all you've got to do is control his heart and how do you control his heart First, you work on the conscious mind first and you keep repeating, repeating, repeating and repeating until the conscious mind deposits it in the heart. And now you're in trouble. That is why some of you are having problems with battles of things you try to change and you can't change them. Old habits that you were keeping for the last 20 years and now you want to change and it's tough to change. Young people, that is why God tells you to stay away from evil things. If you keep watching pornography, you keep reading dirty books, you keep listening to, to bad stories or, or dirty jokes, and if you keep listening, now the first time you see it, it doesn't bother you. But if you keep seeing it, it becomes downloaded. Now once something is downloaded on your hard drive, what happens? Even when you are not conscious of it, it is still running. And all you got to do is press the right button and you see all the pictures in color. That's why the Bible says, take heed what you here why if you don't control what comes into your conscious mind it'll soon become a part of your subconscious mind and it's in your heart and the Bible says, out of the heart what the mouth really speaks it's out of the heart comes what the issues of life and Jesus said from whence comes murders and lust and adultery he says they are coming from the heart everybody say the mind write this down please the mind is defined as the heart it determines the future and destiny of a man I guess what I'm saying today is you are a sum total of the choices you make every day and whatever you decide to hear and see and listen to constantly will become your future you become what you continually hearing you become what you continually seeing that's as simple as life is some of you are still plagued with habits that you've been trying to break and I know I've been dealing with people in counseling and this I've been born again for 20 years and I'm still struggling and the answer is you've downloaded some stuff that is still there now how do you clean a hard drive that's the issue you computer buffs how do you clean a hard drive of stuff that's been downloaded well that's a tough thing to do Sometimes you got to buy a whole new computer because you can't get it off. Hey boys, they're born all over again. Or what you got to do is you've got to buy another program that literally cleans it out. That's what the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is God's software. Yes, yes. Glory, hallelujah. Yes, and the material is the word of God. And the software takes the material and you're supposed to constantly keep hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God until it drowns out what was there for 20 years. That's the only way to do it. 
Now, it's really a battle for the soul. Let's talk about the soul, the mind. Write this down quickly. The mind is the center of the soul. What is the soul? The soul is an integration of three parts. Please write this down. The soul is the integration of the mind, the will, and the emotions. In other words, those three things make up your soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. What is your soul? Your mind, your will. Come on, everybody say, what is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. All of them make up your soul. So your feelings are in your soul. Your decision-making power is in your soul. And your mind, your thinking bank, is in your soul. That makes your soul the most important part of your life. Let me explain why. The battle in life is for the soul of man. The Bible says, he that winneth souls is wise. Now, why did Jesus say that? You see, winning a body is no problem. Even winning a spirit is easy. You get born again in seconds. But winning your soul is a tough job. My job as a teacher and a communicator is to work on your soul. I am after your soul. I want to win your soul. I've already won your body because you're here. And I already won your spirit because you want to find God. But winning your soul is a tougher job. Because winning your soul takes a longer time than winning your body and your spirit. You are born again in a second, but trying to get you converted is a tough job. So the battle is for what? Your soul. The soul of the people, the soul of the nation, the soul of your children, the soul of your spouse, the soul of your entire job. Your soul is in trouble. The attack is against your soul. I want you to get this message. Write this down. The soul is the first component of media created by God. Why is the soul the first component of media? Now this is new stuff for you, so you got to think about this. The soul is a media because the soul is the mediator between the spirit and the body. The soul is the most dangerous part of your life. Matter of fact, your spirit is not your problem. Because you are a spirit. But your soul is your problem because your soul is the one that dictates what your spirit receives. Don't miss this. I know the devil is in the Bahamas today. Because if I was him, I'd come to this meeting myself and sit up front. Right here. You sit right there and listen to me teach. Because the devil knows that I got the key to his battle. The devil ain't after your body. Your body's just a bunch of dirt, a lump of dirt. He ain't after your spirit because your spirit's already filled with someone. But there's a, a, a key component that he can still manipulate. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. And the soul is the medium between the spirit and the body. Now, write this down. The soul receives from the senses and deposits in the spirit. Very important. What does the soul do? It receives from the senses. In other words, hearing, tasting, seeing, touching, and feeling all come to the senses, but they all go to the soul. They go to your mind, your will, and your emotions. So whatever you see, touch, taste, feel, or hear goes to your soul. Now, if your soul takes it and deposits it into you, which is your spirit, then you got to make sure to regulate what the soul is picking up from the senses. That's why Jesus said, take heed what you hear. Take heed means be selective. Regulate your hearing. Uh, choose what you want to listen to. Why? He said because it will, it will leaven the whole lump. My God. It will mess up your whole life. Your soul receives from the senses and deposits in your spirit. But here's the other side. It's a little bit difficult now. The spirit reveals through the soul to the body. Now, here's the problem. I need some help. Can you help me? Come here, son. Can you help me? I want you to stand up here. I got to do this visually so everybody can see this. Can you stand right there for me, please? I need someone else too, please. Can you come? 
I need a woman, a female, okay? Can you just uh, turn facing that way, please? Okay. Can you stand right in front of him here and face that way for me? Thank you, son. I need a lady now. Come, please help me. Thank you, Sylvia. Oh, thank you, Miss Media. Come, come. And hey, that's a good one. Let, let her come. Yeah, since she's media, she could do this real good. I want you to stand right here. Watch where I'm going to put her. In the middle. Okay? Stand right in the middle of them. Face that way. Now, this is the battle that you're facing right now, every day, every moment of the day. This is your spirit. This is your body. This is your soul. Now, your body is getting information from what it sees, what it hears, what it tastes, what it touches, what it feels. And it takes it and transmits it to the soul. The soul then takes it and gives it to your spirit. Alright? And when the spirit gets that information from the soul that it got from the body, the spirit now has to deal with this information. Problem. Once the spirit get all this information inside of it, when the spirit wants the body to do something, who does the spirit talk to? The soul. So the spirit gives the, the directs to the soul and tells the body what to do. Now you got a couple of problems here. Sometimes the body don't want to do what the spirit wants it to do, so the soul is in a battle. Is what you call a mental battle. A battle of the soul. So, your spirit says, the information that I got from the body is unrighteous. And the soul says, but that's all the body gave me. The soul cannot give the body, or the spirit rather, what the body didn't receive. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And you hear it through what? The body. So the body hears something, the soul takes it, believes it, and gives it to the spirit. Now the spirit receives and conceives it. If your spirit has the spirit of God in it, it's not a spirit that's missing there, it's on the inside of the spirit. That spirit disagrees with what the spirit just received. And the spirit of God says, now that is not righteous information. So the spirit of the man tells the soul of the man, that is not righteous. Tell the body that is not righteous. Tell the body to change source of information. Body says, no, I like how it feels. Soul, come on, feel it. And so the soul feel it from the body. And the soul says, it does feel okay. And the spirit says, but it ain't right. So the spirit says, soul, tell the body, stop it. Body say, feels sensually good. Don't you like it, soul? And soul said, mm-hmm, I know it's wrong, but it feels emotionally good. And so the spirit loses. And now the spirit is downloading junk. That's starving it to death. You know who's the most important part of that whole trinity? It's that soul, fella. That soul. Because that soul could decide to reject or accept the power of the soul. So the soul takes from the body, gives to the spirit, but the spirit also takes from the spirit and gives to the soul for the body. So the body can only do what the soul makes it do and the soul can only do what it accepts from the spirit. That's why the Bible says, do not walk in the flesh, but walk in what? The spirit and you not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thank you very much, oh man. All of that is man. Thank you very much. By the way, you know, there's a female in the middle there. She got the feeling part. Praise God. Write this down. The soul feeds the spirit. 
and receives from the spirit. This is a mystery. The soul feeds the spirit, but it also feeds the body through the spirit. Through the soul, rather. And it's very important that, that you be careful what you listen and hear and see and allow to come into your taste buds. That's what drugs are about. Drugs are about tasting and feeling and, and sensing something that your soul begins to emotionally enjoy and the spirit rejects. But if you do it enough times, it downloads it, and now when you want to quit doing drugs, your problem is it's stuck in your hard drive. So you get saved and saved and saved, but you never get your hard drive clean. The only way to be completely free from any kind of habit is to have a replacement of habits. You get to download new information. Write this down, please. What's the purpose of God in all of this? Number one, man is a spirit. He lives in a body. He possesses a soul. That's what man is. Man is a spirit. He lives in a body. He possesses a soul. Say it with me. Man lives in... Man is a spirit, he lives in a body, but he possesses a soul. That's the unity, triunity of man. Whoever controls the soul rules the man. That's it, that's the point. The original purpose of God, therefore, was to rule the seen world from the unseen world through the unseen man living in the seen body on the scene. Get it? In other words, God wanted to control the world through you. But he wanted to do it from the unseen world. And he wanted to do it through your unseen spirit living in your seen physical body and he wanted to do that on the seen earth so that his will which is invisible could be seen visibly through your actions and through your execution so God wanted to rule the world through you without coming to the world by, your, by and through your spirit the soul is God's media for kingdom rulership it's very important to understand this God wants to rule the world through your soul that's why the Bible says <laughs> I wish above all things that you prosper. Notice the focus. Even as your soul prospers. God places the number one prosperity focus on your soul. If you're not prospering in your soul, God says, you are poor in every other area. So if you're not getting the right information, you are actually destroying your life. Very important. Write this down, please. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of the, of the soul, the kingdom of the heart. If the kingdom doesn't get in your soul, the kingdom can't get to the earth. If the kingdom of God cannot get in your soul, it cannot get to the earth. If it cannot get into your heart, the earth will never see the rulership of God. Rulership begins in the heart. That's where it is. And until it gets there, there will be no kingdom manifestation on the earth. The first word of Jesus in his public ministry... Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 it says and Jesus began to preach repent the word repent means what to change your mind where's your mind in your soul his first attention was given to the soul if I can get your soul changed he says then the kingdom can come from heaven on earth now there's a point I want you to write down here very important point and that is the kingdom of darkness is the kingdom of the of the soul also God is battling for your soul. So is Satan. That's my point for the whole day. Satan and God really are not after your body. Even though that's important for the earth. They're really after your soul. God is and Satan is. Because whoever controls your soul controls you. I think we become so spooky, we forgot where the battle is. We become so spiritually spooky that we have actually invented demons that don't exist. And we're fighting things that aren't there. And the real battle we're missing. <laughs> oh, I was studying the life of Jesus last night, just going through some of the thoughts that he expressed and it's incredible I wish I could just teach this for another two hours but you couldn't take it but Jesus is mine he was always going after the mind 
always. He said, if you hear my teaching, listen to my teaching. If you follow my words, listen to my words. He said, my words are spirit and they give you life. He's trying to get it through your soul. If I can get your mind changed, he says, you'll be sanctified. It's a battle for the mind. So we got two kingdoms and both are after your soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions. What is your soul? Your mind, your will. That is why most of you are losing your battles. Think about it. Let's deal with one of them just for a second. Emotions. What do you think is making you keep going back to that situation that you know is wrong? It's your emotions. Satan got you, man. One phone call and your knees get weak. Emotions. You're going back to that ungodly relationship. The battle is over the minute you feel your knees getting weak. And you start leaving the house. And you drive in there and know the Holy Ghost screaming at you saying, Stop! Turn around! Don't go back there! He don't love you, she don't love you, stop it! They're going to break up your marriage! Stop, stop! And you still drive in. It's a battle. And the battle doesn't stop because you're preaching dongs. You got to grab your body. Come on, somebody. He said, I got to beat my body under. Your body got to come here, body. You going back to prayer meeting or back home to eat. It's your emotions. Write this down, please. Let's talk about what, what is the media. Now, we say the soul is God's media. Let's talk about media. The word media, uh, the word media is from the word medium. Write this down, please, because it's very important for every young person and old person to read. Very important to remember this tape. Get this CD, please, I beg you. What I'm teaching today is the key to 2005, 6, 7, 8, 10, 20. Because there is an attack on your soul like you never believe. You got 125 channels in your house with a remote control. And every button is after your soul. So you better understand what they're doing. Every radio station station and every number on the station is after your soul. This ain't entertainment. This is containment. They want to contain you. They want to control you. And that's what it's all about. It's about the media. And the word media is from the word medium. It means to stand between. In other words, the media is the thing between the source and the object. We showed you an example just now. We saw the spirit of man and the body of man. Well, the media is the one in the middle. That's the one that decides which receives what. That's what medium is. The word media means to mediate. Jesus Christ is called the mediator between God and man. Can I hear amen to that? Oh, I want to stop there for a couple of days and just preach. The Bible says there's only one medium between God and man. Only one. And who is that? The man Christ Jesus. That means if you get information from anybody else, Lord have mercy, to save your soul, you ain't got the right message. Hello? Christ is not one of the prophets between God and man. It says there's only one mediator. I respect Buddha. I appreciate Muhammad. I thank God for Haile Selassie. I thank God for Baha'i Lula La La. All these guys are great. But the Bible says there's only one mediator between God and man. And it's the man Christ Jesus. That means anybody else will give you distorted communication. Oh, I'm going to show you something you ain't going to believe this. Write this down, please. Media means to interpret. When I travel to foreign countries and I speak to thousands of people in these big meetings, I speak English, they speak Portuguese. I speak English, they speak Russian. I speak English, they speak French. I speak English, they speak Spanish. And I'm standing there and they put between me and the people this guy. Now, I got to hope that this guy... Come on. Is telling them what I say. Not only that, I got to hope he understanding himself what I'm saying. Boy, interpret. That's what media is. 
That means the chances of you getting the wrong message is so high when the mediator is in question. Okay. Between me and 10,000 people sitting there is the media mediator, the inter interpreter. Who's the most important in that whole scenario? Who? That fellow in the middle. Can you imagine? As important as I am, he's more important than me. And as important as those 10,000 people are, he's more important than they are. Why? He determines what they hear. Come on, talk to me. When you turn that radio on, that TV on, that CD on, that CD player on, when they turn, you are taking a chance. When you open a book that you just bought, you're taking a chance. You got to pray. Glory, hallelujah. And that's why we've been so messed up in reading the Bible. Because we are the mediator between us and our understanding. And we got to depend on our concepts and hope they're right. Very important. Now, write this down. The media controls the message and therefore the quality and the meaning and the essence of the communication. The media controls the message. Now, the source does not control the message. The source knows what he wants to say, but the source got to totally depend on the media to get it right. And if the media gets it wrong, then the people, the object of that message will get it wrong. Oh, hallelujah. That is why we cannot just allow anyone to preach to the world. And they're preaching to the world. Every channel you turn to. This young man that is so famous right now is a white boy with blonde hair. What's his name? Eminem. He got my name. This young man, Eminem, is a dangerous young man. He's a worship leader. I saw him leading worship the other night with over 70,000 screaming young kids. He was leading worship. I'm not sure which God they were worshiping, but they had their hands raised and they was going just like he was going to church and they were swaying with him. 70,000 men getting it on and everything he said to them to do, they did. And he was cursing. Sounds like 50 cents. These are mediums. So what do we do? What do we do? Do we allow Levard and, and these and Corey them to sing or let Eminem sing? See, you gotta decide who's gonna sing. So, they, so Corey sang it this morning. Some of you still ain't figuring out what he's talking about. But he's he dealing with a medium that ain't for you. Your head too old for that. But you got a 70% of our nation that understands what he's talking about. 70%. Amen. So what are we going to do? We got to make sure he get the right message. And I heard my sermons this morning in that song. Amen. Amen. And that's what we need. Don't criticize the medium. Check the message it's given. Write this down, please. Media can corrupt, clarify, pervert, or protect the integrity of a message. It can do all those things. It can corrupt it. It can pervert it. Or it can clarify it. It can protect it. Or destroy it. The medium is the most powerful thing in communication. Write this down. The media controls what the receiver hears, thinks, and understands. Very important. The media controls that. And so we need to make sure that the medium that we are using is communicating the right message to the hearers because the hearers will get whatever the media gives them. We saw a demonstration here this morning. I hope you're not offended by what, those, what they showed in the media presentation. But that's happening every day on your television. You ever heard this, this TV show called My Two Dads? Or you ever heard about Will and Grace? 
I mean, Will ain't got no grace. You know that th these people need grace. But these are serious things. And they are communicating things. I mean, two men kissing on your TV and your son watching it, your daughter watching it. Two women kissing and they watching it. And you sitting there, you don't even know what's going on. Praise the Lord. You praise the Lord. You better check the medium in your house. Why? It's controlling what your children think. How do you fight that? What you do is you come on right after Will and Grace and says, Hello, this is Dr. Miles Monroe. We're here to correct and clarify what they just perverted. Come on, clap loud for me. Praise God. In other words, you don't back out of it. You get in the middle of it. You got to fix it. You got to correct it. You got to clarify it. Why? Bible says be in the world. Get in there. Don't be a part of it, but be in there. You got to get in there. And boy, that's why they got the price so high because they don't want you in there. They lock you out by finances. That's why the church remains poor. The devil ain't worrying but the church. Just keep them poor. Why? They can't compete with the media of the mind. Write this down, please. God considered mediation as a dangerous power. And he warned us against the use and abuse of it. You know, no, when I read the scriptures, I was shocked. God is very sensitive about mediums. Why, the thing in the middle is dangerous. So God has a very strong sensitivity to mediums, to media. Let me read a couple of scriptures for you, all right? And you're by the tape because you're taking too long to write. Praise the Lord. The Bible comments on the power of the media. Now write these scriptures down, very important. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 27. It says, a man or woman who is a medium or a spiritist among you must be put, what? To death. Because look, if they are mediating and they represent me, you kill them. Now that is a tough law. <laughs> God said, look, if they prophesy and I didn't talk to them, kill them. Do you know what they did to prophets who didn't prophesy correctly? They stoned them to death. In other words, God said, look, if... <laughs> well, I can't get, this is deep. God said, kill the media that's not presenting me. Kill them. Don't put them away. Destroy them. That's how dangerous the media is to God. It's a death sentence. Oh, the second one is dangerous. Watch this one. This one is serious. Deuteronomy 18 verse 10. It says, Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, who practices deviation or sorcery, interprets, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or cast spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. God says, they may they not be among you. By the way, check that list so good because you, you may know somebody who qualified to be out of the church. Reading cards. That's omen. Tarot cards. Go to Miami to get your palm read. God says, now let me tell you something. You are an abomination. You trying to get information from me through somebody I didn't set up I have said to the church apostles prophets evangelists pastors teachers I set up no mother divine and papa boo boo I, I, I know who I said come on y'all talk to me God says no no don't get this don't get me mixed up they're not between me and you Matter of fact, that's why God hates for you to read astrology. Because you're putting the stars between God and yourself. And God ain't send no star to talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you know, the papers be on my desk. And they give you the paper. Just, just glance at it to check. God says you shouldn't be among it. Write this one down, 1 Samuel 28. Watch the results of wrong media. Saul then said to his attendants, Find me a woman who is in the media. <laughs> Find me someone who's in the middle. I need a media. Show me a medium so I may go and inquire of her. Since God ain't talking to me directly, let me go hire a witch, he says. Well. 
Oh, that sound like some of these Bahamians and Caribbean people now. You know, they hear from God no more, so they gone. Paying a couple of dollars and get little things done. God says, uh-uh. Now let's see what happens when Saul did this, all right? Watch what happens when Saul did this. It says here, now he misused and abused the kingdom of God. Here's what it says in 1 Chronicles 10, 13, what happened to Saul. It says, and Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord and even consulted a medium for guidance. What? Saul died because God killed him. This man made a mistake. But God wasn't mad at him. But he consulted the wrong media to get information. What are you doing at 2 o'clock in the morning on your internet? What are you consulting? Where do you surf, young people, to get your information about life? God said, he died because he chose the wrong media to listen to. What books do you buy? What stations do you keep your radio tuned to in your car, young men and women, older men and women? What is constantly, constantly being said to your conscious mind and downloaded eventually in your heart? It's the power of the media. The devil is after your soul. And Saul lost his because he went after the wrong media. He says, so the Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to who? David. Over to who? David. Now, I want you to follow David's life versus Saul's life. David had serious media, eh? The largest song book in the Bible was written by this man. It's called the Book of Songs. And if you read and listen to his hits. The Lord is my strength and song. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, Dave had the media in the bush. Dancing in the mountains. In other words, if you can't find good media, write your own. Got it, young people? That's why I'm so proud of our young people. And listen, we just getting warmed up. I'm about to kickstart this ministry with new structure. By November, we're going to be on a glide ride. And I'm telling you, we're going to have some stuff happening here that's going to blow you away. I'm just in the, in the preparation stage here. But we're going to have to grab the media in every area to control what goes into the minds of our nation. You can't just sit back and get mad. You got to participate and be glad. You can't leave it. Let's talk about the first use of the media before anything existed. What did God use for the media? This is interesting. The first media was simply the word. Everybody say word. Boy, words are important. The word is the medium used by God to communicate his will, his desire, his thoughts. And that resulted in what? The creation of the world. In other words, God had an idea in his mind. He used the media of the word to get it out. And the word produced creation. In other words, the mediation between God and creation is the word. So the first one to introduce media is God himself. And the word was his first media. And today it is still the most powerful media. What you hear will either kill you or save you. Write this down please. Genesis 1 says, and God said, verse 3, verse 6, and God said, verse 9, and God said, verse 11, and God said, verse 14, and God said, verse 20, and God said, Verse 24, and God said. Verse 26, and God said. God did everything by using this medium of the word. John chapter 1, verse, verse 1 to 3. It says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. Important thing here is to notice that the word is God. Do you see that? Okay, let me explain why. This word, word, is important. 
uh, is the word logos, L-O-G-O-S. Write it down. The word there for the word is the word logos. The Hebrew word and the Greek word here that is translated in the Hebrew and the Greek for logos, it actually means this. It means expression of a thought. Write it down, please. Logos means what? Expression of a thought. Come on, I want you to be smart now, young people. Get this and understand it. The word logos means what? Expression of a thought. So if you were to read that verse and use the literal meaning, it'll sound like this. In the beginning was the expression of God's thoughts. And God's thoughts was God. And God was His thoughts. All things were made by the thoughts of God that were expressed. God bless you. Stay blessed. For more of our resources, follow us on our social media handles.